Hi, for this video what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a binomial probability distribution using the TI Inspire. Um, a die is rolled six times, X represents the number of times a five is rolled, and we want to create a binomial probability distribution and graph. I'm going to have to show you how to graph by hand. Um, for some reason my computer-based TI Inspire will not allow me to do a frequency histogram. I can do it on my handheld, but I can't show you how to do it on my handheld. So. I will just show you how to do it by hand. All right, so with this, the reason that we know that this is binomial, besides the fact that it says create a binomial probability, most of the time it's not going to tell you that it's going to create, say, to create a probability distribution. The way that we know that it's probability or a binomial probability is because we are doing this for a fixed number of times. It says that n is going to equal 6. Okay. Um, the second one is that you have to be able to classify each um, trial as a success or failure. So when I roll the die, it's either going to be a five or it's not. So I can classify it as a success or a failure. Um, the third thing is, is that the probability has to um, remain constant each time. And for a die, no matter how many times I roll it, the probability of rolling a five is always one out of six. Okay. And, um, the last thing is, is that X has to be able to represent the number of counts or the number of successes that you had out of the number of trials, which we can do. Okay. Um, if you're using the binomial probability formula, you have to know N, P, N, Q. So just in case you're asked to find Q, remember that Q is always 1 minus P and it represents the probability of a failure. So in this case, we have a much greater chance of a failure than we do of a success. And I listed all of my x values here. I can either have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or as much as 6 successes. So that means that when I roll my die, I can have 0 fives all the way up to 6 fives. If you have to calculate the probabilities using the formula, then you would have to use the formula for 0, for 1, for 2, for 3, for 5, for 6, all the way up. Um, and it can be very time consuming, especially if you have to do this like 10 times. So I'm going to use the TI Inspire to help me find these probabilities. So let me grab my calculator and what we're going to do is we're going to just create a spreadsheet screen. I'm going to list my X values as X and then I'm going to go in and I'm just going to plug in the possible values. So I can have zero successes, one, all the way up to six successes. Okay, and then I'm going to go over to B and I'm going to put this as the probability of X. So that's what the P of X stands for. And I'm going to use this row right here, which allows you to put equations in. So I'm going to go to menu and statistics and under statistics, I want to um, go to my distributions. This represents all of the probability distributions that my graphing calculator has. And since this one is binomial probability density function is what we're looking for, the binomial PDF, um, you can either read this as probability density function or pro probability distribution function. They're both the same. What it is is it's programmed with the binomial formula and it will automatically plug in all of the values for us. The number of trials is six. Um, the probability of success for this is one out of six. Probabilities always have to be between zero and one, so make sure that you put this in as a decimal or a fraction. And then the X values, we stored that in our variable list X. And we can just click OK. And if you notice, it automatically populated all of these. If you look at this down here, it shows you that it did the binome PDF, which is using the binomial formula for the probability density function. And it did it for six trials, one out of six, using your X, the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so this has gone through, like if I scroll down, um, or if I arrow down, it does give me all of my values, all of my probabilities. Um, for five and six, if you notice, those are very, very unlikely to happen. This is almost a 0% probability. This happens 0.0021% of the time, which is very, very unlikely. Down here, if you ever see this E in your calculator, it means scientific notation. Um, so that's how that is written. Let me click cancel, I accidentally clicked on it. I did not mean to do that. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and write these down. I do have them on a sheet of paper, so I can just write them down quickly. Um, 
The most likely to occur is one because that's our theoretical probability. We have a 33.49% or 0.3349, um, a, a probability of 0.3349 or 33.49% probability of getting zero. Um, we have a 0 0.4019 probability of getting exactly one, 0 0.2009 of getting exactly two, 0 0.0536. So getting three out of six of them to be a five is only happens about 5% of the time. Um, four, this happens less than 1% of the time. Five rarely happens and six is even more uncommon. So with this, the default is less than 5%. So all of these would be considered very unusual. Anytime your probability of X, the default is less than 0 0.05 or 5%. Okay. Um, if it's greater than 5%, then that's common. That's what we would expect to see because that's within two standard deviations. Um, so with this, what we would do is if we wanted to create a graph, and like I said, I don't know why I can't get my graphing calculator on my computer to work. I did it on my handheld, but it will not do the same thing on my graphing calculator on my computer. So I'm just going to show you how to do a hand drawing of the graph. Um, over here, we would do our probability of X. This is 0.1. This would be 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. It's important to create a scale so that anybody looking at it will know what you're talking about. Um, down here, we're just going to use our number of successes. And we want to make sure that we label this so people know what we're talking about. So this is the number of fives. out of six rolls. So if I did this six times, this is how many fives I would expect to see. Okay. Um, so then all I would have to do is go in and I would calculate the probabilities. 0.33 would be about here. And then I would shade in this one. Okay. For the next one, since this one occurs about 40% of the time, I would just go up above the 40. And this would be the most likely to happen because it's the, got the highest probability. Okay, the next one would be 0 0.20. So really a 0, 1, or 2 are your most likely to occur. Everything else becomes very, very um uh, much smaller probability as you go on. And that's because your initial probability of success is so low. Um, since your initial probability of success is so close to one, it's always going to create something that's more skewed to the right. Um, the closer your probability of success is to 0.5, the more symmetric your graph is going to be. And then the closer your probability is to one, the more skewed to the left your graph will be. Um, for the last ones, the 0 0.08, it will show up slightly, but it's just a smidge. And then the last two are pretty much zero. Like it's pretty much level with here. Like it's, you can't even see it. So if it asks you to describe the shape, we could say that this is skewed to the right. Remember that we always go towards the tail. It's heavier on this end, but our mean is going to be influenced by these uh, little bits of tails over here. So this is a skewed right distribution. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. And I apologize that I couldn't get my graphing calculator to work. I don't know why my computer one is different than my handheld. Um, I did want to show you how to do it on there, but for some reason, the programming is different. As always, thanks for watching. If you have questions, please let me know.